one of the delights of the job I had was meeting famous people mm. and, and all kinds mm. of yep. De Gaulle and all sorts of yep. amazing people, mm. movie stars and mm. princes of the church and all of that. I don't think I ever met anyone who was as I had been led to believe he was by his public persona. Oh, yes. Uh, they're always different. Mm. And um, uh, I think this, th th this is contributed to by the difficulty of communication uh, that exists. Almost nobody comes through on television the way he really is. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so these campaigns with the image and all that kind of thing mm -hmm. uh, simply compound the problem. Yes, and th th this is something about the human imagination, though, isn't it? I mean, even before there was any television, the impression that anybody formed of anybody before they met them always oh, tended sure. to be misleading. Yeah, they're taller and yes, smarter. Yes, that's and, right. And, yes. Yes. Because yes. of television, we think we actually know them. Yes, that, that's right. Mm -hmm. Which misleading. is extraordinary. Yes. I mean, just yes. as a trivial instance, there's one very well known uh, politician. Uh, who never ever smiles on television. I've never seen him smile on television. When you meet him face to face, he's got a most lively, rubbery mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. fun, expressive face. Yes, yes. And you think, who are these two people? Yes, you know? Yes. Yeah. I encountered Robert Redford on the street the other day in my hometown, walking along eating an ice cream cone. He's a little bitty short man, yes. you know. Yes, yes. And, uh, and was it the right kind of ice cream? I can't, it was I the can't wrong kind of ice cream. I can't claim that as a kind of deception. But, but we are coming, we are coming to the to the end. And uh, I mean, I realise it's it, it, once one talks about truth and lying, one's into a variety of fields. We began, of course, by the fact that we're in the middle of an election campaign. That curious attempt, somehow to bring the, the area of Talleyrand to the people and somehow at the same time tell them the truth, not tell them the truth, or tell them as much of the truth as you think they should know, and on the other hand that you think they deserve to know and that they want to know. What I generally want to know from you all is whether you think over the last few weeks, and indeed over the next week, whether you anticipate that truth to some extent is a casualty. Yes. You do? Yes. Inevitably, there's nothing. Oh, I, said, I don't know about inevitably, but I mean, why I'm do you think disastrously? Inevitably? Why? Yes. Well, <laughs> I am horrified at the way all the politicians are going on. Um, I think. Well, I, I think it has emerged. A very interesting point. This is something to do with the extremeness of our party conflict at the moment. That the the, the, the policies of both parties are relatively extreme, and I think somebody was right to say that this has led to. The election being is, is partly responsible for the election being carried on very much by knocking copy, and the knocking copy has a lot of it personal because that appears to be the kind that occurs to those responsible. And I think it has been a debased and degrading and depressing and generally miserable affair. I may have a very biased mm. approach, but that's how I'm feeling. Actually, I, I opened I, with you. I, Do you feel I, as gloomy as you did? Well, you didn't feel gloomy in '79. You were portentous then. Ah, oh, well, it's portentously gloomy now, I suppose. <laughs> mm. uh, I, I think it, it, it's not been uh, an edifying election. It's been a, mm. a very skillful one, the most skillful I can remember. And um, I, I, I think um, we need to sort of uh, start political life again after mm. the election mm. with some some, some mm. ideas being discussed. Mm. Philip, what about you made of all of this? Are we well, hopelessly I, unrealistic? Well, before I, I came in this evening, I was very impressed with the uh, uh, British system, and I, I still am. Now, that may be because my standards are hopelessly debased by the 30-second uh, American commercial. I think that we have uh, an artificial and unrealistic view of how people either do or ought to make up their minds. That the important thing is that they make them up, and that in retrospect, they have some continuity with their traditions and with their, with their morality. And not that we prescribe they must read so many manifestos and listen to so many debates and then ought to be allowed to vote only if they've made up their minds on what we would regard as the right basis. I think uh, your system, at least as I see it as an outsider, is a very impressive one. And I think the weeks I've seen have been, uh, been pretty, pretty persuasive. Well, to, to, to those of you still there, um, I, uh, I really should thank uh, the Bishop and uh, Anne Burdus and Philip Bobbitt and Anthony Smith, John Ehrlichman, Mary Midgley for bearing with me and my preoccupations with, and our preoccupations indeed, with lying and truth, falsity and deception, politics and personal morality.